G'day guys, Moose here, and welcome to another Sawdust and Chrome safety video. And this one is on the drill press. I'd argue one of the best pieces of kit you can get, and I use it all the time. So I'm gonna go through some safety stuff to keep you out of trouble. I'm gonna go through the parts, sections of the, uh, the drill press, and things to consider when you, uh, if you're in the market to buy one. So that's it. Like always, I wanna keep you out of harm's way, and we don't want to bust something that we can't grow back. That's it. Let's get into it. Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> now the drill press is an awesome piece of kit. Obviously the idea is that I always get perfect, accurate, upright holes into whatever I'm drilling. And I use it actually a lot more than I'd ever realised. So I think it's a must have. Three things to consider. Obviously budget's gonna decide if you're a brand new option, second hand market options, um, maybe you jag one for free and it needs a bit of restoration. I'm a massive fan of that. Um, and then also decide if you're after one that's majority for timber work or for the metalwork side of things, depending on what your uh, workshop mainly caters for. This is a huge one horsepower, massive, pedestal version bolted to the floor. Um, they do come in a lot smaller um, bench top versions, so you just grab what you need and budget will allow. I think that's about it. All right, the parts of it, starting from the base. This is the base. Make sure it's always bolted. If it's a bench top version, it has to be bolted to the bench. Floor models have to be bolted to the floor. The upright they call the column. This is our aftermarket table. It's a, an upgrade we did. A bit more column. All right, on this side of it. The motor hangs off the back. That's our emergency stop switch. This is our on off. This is the chuck. This is what they call the head of it. This is where all the bolts live. Uh, on this side, you probably can't see it. This is the table lock. We'll swing around. Now on this side, the most important thing here is our feed handle. This guy is our depth stop, so I can tell exactly where I want the drills to stop. If I open this up, that's where the belts live. Hope you can see that. And depending on what I'm doing, you can move the belts around to slow the speeds. Slower or quicker. So that's the original table and the two bolts at the back you undo and you can tilt the table left or right if you need angles. One day I will do a video of some awesome upgrades for a drill press. But a good mate of mine, Watto, when he was here, um, designed all this and it's schmick. It's made it oh, 10 times more useful. Last one here, that's our table, uh, table height adjuster. On the other side is the clamp. And while I'm on this side, this is an old school. That's our chuck, but this is our key that we use to tighten up our drill bits. So, I told you it was old school. That's it, let's get some safety done. Like always, your safety is a big priority for me. So, I want to give you a few tips to keep you out of harm's way. I want you to be able to count to 10 for the rest of your life. So, let's go. Number one is always your PPE. Earmuffs and glasses. Make sure you wear them for everything. Hot tip number two is to do with the chuck and the chuck bit. So when you put your drill bits in, you tighten it up by hand. In the chuck, there's three self-centering jaws kind of come down. As you tighten it, sometimes the kids will put the drill bit in between two, not the three, and 
If I've got it nice and tight by hand and I spin it and it looks okay, I've done a good job. Please make sure you tweak it, tighten it up. And please don't ever leave the chuck key in the chuck, even when you're done. I can't imagine the damage to the machine, and more importantly to yourself. So nice and tight, chuck keys out of the way. I'll take you across and we'll have a look at the keyless chucks you can get. All right, a keyless chuck. So how it works is you basically hang on to the top, you twist this to get your jaws up and down. So let's get the drill bit in. So that's nice and tight by hand. Then you tweak these against each other. And that's it, they grab nice and tight. While we're here, this is the Metalwork one. It's a slow speed, one and a half horsepower beast. Hot tip number three is know where you're on, you're off, and most important, your isolation switch is. So, if you get in trouble at all, please make sure you know how to get out of trouble. Safety tip number four, and I probably haven't had to worry about it since I was in year nine, is long hair. Please, long hair, loose clothing, jewelry, bracelets, anything potentially that could get caught in the chuck has to be sorted out. Whether it's hats, hairnets, beanies, do your collars up, um, please be careful. Safety tip number five, don't be lazy, this one catches people out. Depending on what you're working on and what you're drilling, you need to have it clamped down. So, whether it's some of these um, F clamps, could be G clamps if you're in metalwork, uh, machine vices, this is our lightweight woodwork one, versus heavy duty uh, metalwork one. This one weighs a ton, but metalwork in particular, if it goes wrong in metalwork, it it does damage. Um, depending on our projects, we've made our own clamps up to help us get out of trouble and to keep our students safe. One of the upgrades to this was actually the fence at the back. It can be undone, moved around, and depending on what we're working on, super handy as well. So. There's so much power in these motors that if, if something lets go, you get caught out real quick. Before you know it, you, you're in trouble. So please make sure, depending on what you're working on, it's clamped up and it's gonna be safe for you. Safety tip number six. And I've been caught out doing this because I've been lazy, but make sure your drill bits, whatever you're using, whether it's metalwork, woodwork, the Forstner bits, um, normal twist drills, that they're sharp. Sharper the better. When you work with blunt tools, that's when you get caught out and that's when you get hurt. So, sharp bits. Safety tip seven is to do with the speeds that you run the drill at. So, basically, a metalwork, it should be slower because you're drilling through serious pieces of metal. Some of the gauge might be quite thick. But basically, metal works slower. The bigger the drill bit, you should slow it down as well versus small drill bit. In woodwork, there's a little bit more leniency. So, kind of same principle. If you're doing like kind of softer timbers, plywoods versus the hardwoods, exactly the same. If I'm trying to go through a big Forstner bit versus a little one, bigger the bit, the slower it has to go as well. So, speeds, adjust them accordingly. Now my last safety tip, I'd argue is the most important, and it's always the last safety tip for everything. So quite with it, I don't feel 100%, I'm not concentrating, don't do it. If you're, if you're the, if your gut's saying, I don't think I've clamped that hard enough, I don't think that fence is going to work, I don't think this is a good idea, please stop. 
So your gut instincts is, are always spot on. Um, if it's late in the day, sometimes I'll stay off the power tools. If I'm not feeling 100% because I'm crook, I'll stay off the power tools. Um, trust your gut instinct to keep you out of trouble. I think that's about it. Oh, I would hate, I wouldn't wish it upon anyone, touch wood, that you injure yourself somehow and it's just something you have to explain for the rest of your life. And it's not a cool story. We only want good stories. All right, that's it. Oh, wait for the hot tip. All right, to finish this off, my hot tips. First one. You'll see me when I mark stuff out. A twist drill bit, they're not super accurate. So you'll see me use a center punch or a screw. But I'll give it a guiding hole little indent to help the drill bit locate. So I like to center punch everything I'm going to go into. Next hot tip, if you can, this is a bit I care about. I want to look after the back of it. So it's good to use a sacrificial piece. So the bottom one I don't care about, top one I do. As we line it up, and the back is always beautiful, and that's my rubbish piece. Also. On this um, table upgrade, this actual centerpiece is our sacrificial centerpiece. Once we've trashed it, we can pop it out, flip it over, trash the other side. Once we've trashed them both, we can replace it. I'm a fan of, it bugs me the kids do this, mine at home is schmick. Use a sacrificial, sacri sacrificial board so it gets damaged. Same deal. So I'm gonna drill through this into this. So this is only a small bit, so I'm happy to hang on to it. But also, see how this is getting daggy? Real daggy? Your scrap piece only works if it drills into a clean piece. It doesn't work if I drill into already daggy bits. So let's have a crack. Same again, I get a nice clean end. And, oh, my last hot tip. When you're drilling, everything's always fine. It's best to gently pop out of whatever you're drilling into. You get a nicer, cleaner end, but also when you just pop out is when something's gonna go wrong. So if you're too harsh, something might go wrong. If you're not hanging on tight enough and you bust out through the back, a jig potentially might move. So everything's always nice and safe until you bust out the back. So that's when I want you to be real careful. I think that's it. Go on, get out of here, go build something. Let me know how you go. Hey guys, Moose here, 
and welcome to another, um, damn it. First rule is always PPE. Make sure you got your glasses and your earmuffs. Damn it. Safety tip number four, I haven't had to deal with since probably year nine. <laughs> Long hair, sorry that was trash. Safety tip number, <laughs> oh God.